Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, we're so happy to have Abuna Shnuda uh, starting uh, us uh, off with this uh, series of uh, uh, Limitless, I Can Do All Things uh, Through Christ, who strengthened me. And Abuna today uh, will start us off with uh, I Can You Turn and Repent. So welcome, Abuna. Thank you so much for being with us, Abuna Shnuda. Um, leaked from uh, the Church of St. Mary and St. Joseph in Richmond. Thank you, Wuna. Is it the camera is used? How's everyone doing? Thank you for uh, joining in this uh, weather. And I hope everyone uh, is safe. I hope everyone who made it is safe and everyone who couldn't make it is still safe. Uh, I like this uh, series of topic, Limitless. And if you notice the verse that uh, under Limitless it says, I can do all things through, through Christ who strengthened me. So if you notice every uh, topic here starts with I can, I can, I can, right? Okay. And since it's I can, by myself, will not be able to do it, right? So the key word in this verse, through who? Through Christ. And this is the key word, to reach to this limitless. So I can, I can, through Christ. Through Christ. And Christ will strengthen me. Uh, the word, I can do all things, do all things. Maybe it seems like we... Can uh, can somebody tell me like what does it mean all things? Can I do for example? I can do all things. Can I pass my exams without studying? This is all things. Can you consider this as all things? Yes. No. It's all things uh, that are in God's hand. I can do all things. Where do you see this? Through God's will. Can I pray for someone to be healed and God will give him healing? Can I uh, uh, play without uh, play basketball without practicing and God will allow me to win? All things, is it? Are these all things like consider me under this category, all things? What do you think? Look at this. This is Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Look at the two verses before 13, okay? 11 and 12, what does it say? It says, not that I speak in regard to need, St. Paul is talking, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need. So what's all things? What's all things? If I have plenty or if I am hungry, if I, I have I, I abundance and if I am in need, that's all things. In all states, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So in reality, is not based on me it is not based on the circumstances or the state it's all based on god who strengthened me god will give me strength right so the word all things means in all circumstances in all states that i am in uh, whether in hunger or in need or in abundance and when we start with this we realize now only i can understand I can you turn to God, right? That's now only I can understand to you turn to God, to repent. 
someone will tell me, okay, if it's all related to God, why many of us, like we can do that U-turn, right? Why? If it's all related to God, it's through God who strengthen me. We all acknowledge that God will give me a strength and I will do it. If it's all of God who will strengthen me, why I can't do it? What's, what's my position here? And what uh, and how God will help me in this? Can I do that U-turn on my own without God approaching me? What do you think? Can I do that U-turn without God interference? Yes? Okay. We have a free will, but can we do it on my own? Yes? No? Yes? What do you think? What's a repentance mean? What's a U-turn means in Coptic or in Greek? It means what? Tanoia, right? Metanoia. This U-turn means metanoia, okay? When I don't realize that I am driving south on 404 and all, and all of a sudden I found Finch exit. That means what? I missed the exit to steals, right? So I realize something is wrong. Now when I realize something is wrong, what happened to me? This is, it came to my mind, right? And like something, like in my mind says this is wrong you're driving wrong right what do i do now exit from finch and then we'll go south again where to steal so the metanoia this is a change in mind a change in heart that lead to a change in behavior okay my mind realized i'm going wrong okay i feel like uh I feel like I already drove like one hour. So for sure, like this is not right. And I already saw the sign Finch. So my mind and my heart tell me that this is wrong. Now I have to, that will lead me to something else. What does it lead to me? Change to my behavior, exit, go south and come back. So this is the U-turn. So the U-turn or the metanoia involve two things. Number one, change in mind or heart. And number two, change in action or behavior, correct? So when I say repent, what's in it? Same exactly, driving on south, on 404 south, and now I'm saying repent. What do I do? Something wrong, I realize something wrong, right? And then what's wrong? Change in mind, change in heart, and then I realize I have to change my behavior. I change my action. And this is a word metanoia. This is a word repent. This is a word repent. But look at this. When you, when you look at the two different ways you find, like going south will lead to uh, different destinations and going north, right? Going uh, this side where I am on, that will lead to sin, uh, Satan, death but the other way salvation god and life so in that decision that i am taking in that decision when the mind something is wrong change my mind change my heart and now i want to change my direction i am also looking at the goal right i'm looking at the goal what's a goal here my salvation what's a goal here who is a goal here God, why I'm doing this? I want eternal life, not death, right? So this is part of my realization. I found that I am on that direction. This is sin. I found that I'm following Satan and I am found out that uh, this will lead me to death, right? So now why I'm taking this decision to go on the other hand, on the other direction, because I want salvation, I want to be saved, and also I want to follow God, and also I want to have the eternal life, right? So that's included also in that in that action. So if I, if I say now, if I say, what's, like, 
to repent. What does it mean to repent? You can tell me the two things. What does it mean to repent? We say, I can repent. So to repent, to do what? Let's see. Probably. And and change and all these changes, what do I consider? Just all of a sudden now I change, this is wrong, I will go change. What do I consider here? Direction. Where? Compared to where? Probably. And the wrong side will lead to death. The right side will lead to life, right? The wrong side follow Satan. The right side will follow God, right? Okay. Remember when we talk about God through Christ who strengthened me, right? Where is God in in this action, in this change in mind and heart? How he can call me or encourage me or strengthen me or help me or guide me in that action? Who can tell me? How? Okay. And will that be the same call to everyone? And would everyone have the same response to that call? No. Look at this. Matthew, Levi, he used to be what? What's his job? Tax collector, right? And he now he's a, or, or we know him as, as what? One of the, okay. Evangelists, right? The, the gospel, one of the, uh, of the, one of the evangelists, right? So when the Lord Jesus Christ called him, he called him and he told him, follow me. What did he do? So he left all, rose up, and followed him. Did the Lord Jesus Christ call anyone to follow me? And he did not on the spot. Who you remember? Someone came to the Lord Jesus Christ and asked him, what do I do to inherit the kingdom of God? Okay? And he told him, you're almost there, right? He, he knew all commandments. You're almost there. You're almost just one step. To be one of the disciples like Levi, like Matthew. But he missed something, right? So did the Lord Jesus Christ call him to? Or did the Lord Jesus Christ also approach him to call for repentance? Or to, to change his direction? But the response was different, right? Matthew here, he left all, rose up, and followed him. And this is not only at this step. What happened after this? After he did all of that. Who knows? What happened after he repented and he followed the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. He invited who? All tax collectors, all his friends. And tax collectors also in this, at this culture at that time considered to be what? Good people, bad people. Sinners, right? Why? Yes, collect more money. Okay. And, and this is like, uh, this is, it's not only like, this is like, it's not their job to collect more money and to give what's uh, uh, for Caesar is for Caesar. No, it's, it's, uh, they, they use their job to collect more money to steal from it. Right. But this, this, it happens to all tax collectors. And when this happened, he collected all tax collector, well, okay, and the Lord Jesus Christ came, and he wants to introduce the Lord Jesus Christ. He followed him, and what did he do? What the Pharisees and scripts, did they like this? Did they like this setup? That the Lord Jesus Christ with the tax collectors, with all these people, what did he do? What did he do? Those uh, scribes and Pharisees. Yes, 
Yes. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Not only in their hearts, they actually talk to him. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus said what? Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I haven't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So here, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is telling them this information. If you feel that you are well, you don't need a physician. But if you feel that you are sick, I came for you to call you to repentance. So that will give me the first step here, my status, right? So God will approach me, will approach everyone, will approach everyone. Why everyone's response is different than the other? This is number one. What's number one? If I find myself a, if I find myself well and righteous, do I need anything from God? Do I need anything for repentance? I don't. But if I feel that I am a sinner and I feel I am in need, now, Will God help me and guide me? Yes, right? So it's the same call for everyone, but it's not the same response. The response will be based on, if I realize I am in need, if I, am, I realize that I am a sinner, here God will help me, will guide me. Because he came actually for, a, for those who are sick. He didn't came for those who are righteous. And that's what he told them. He told them, those Pharisees, he told them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So what do you think about this verse? This is from Isaiah 30, verse 15. In returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. You can tell me another thing here. And we said, number one, I have to realize a, I am sick. I am a sinner, right? Number two, this is another thing. What's here involved with the returning to come back, to repent. In returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Someone can tell me. Quietness. quietness. Bravo. E, what's in quietness? Not, not only confidence. Quietness, it has another meaning. Why we, why we are in a noisy world here? Distractions. Thank you. Thank you. In returning and rest, like all distractions, like silent all distractions, right? So all these noise are coming, let's silent them, right? When I silence all these noise, I will be able to hear God who's coming to me, who's calling me, who's approaching me. If, I, if I'm stuck with all these distractions, would I be able to listen to him and to follow him? No, I'm gonna be stuck, right? And this is the difference between Matthew and the rich young man. The rich young man, he was so distracted. He knows a command, but he was so distracted. He was so attached to it. But Matthew, he left everything and rose. You see these words like, like lift all, rose and follow him. Like, like how? How you change everything, heart, mind, direction, action, behavior, everything you change it just by one word. He's, he was ready. He knows that he was uh, sick and he knows that and he has to stop all these distractions. So number one, my state, I want to feel I, I am sick. I am in need, right? Number two, my distractions. I have, this is surrounding me, right? Or in me, in my mind. Sometimes my mind has a lot of distractions, right? And I have to silence all these distractions. Pope Shenouda is saying a very nice uh, quote here, and you will see this in uh, his uh, book, Life of Repentance and Purity. He said, a sin is a state of being separated from God 
then repentance will be the means of returning to God. So if there is a means to separate me from God, that's a sin. Okay? If there is a means to connect me, connect me with God, this is this is repentance. So in another word, sin will separate me from God. Repentance will connect me back to God. For God says, return to me and I will return to you. That's what God says, right? And as sin is disputing with God, repentance is reconciliation with God. As sin is disputing with God, it doesn't work. Like it doesn't, it can't be with God. Repentance is reconciliation with God. So do you see now the means to reconnect back? How can I connect back? When I realize my state, and now I realize what it means to, to approach, now I have to this to have, uh, uh, like I know now the sin will separate me from God. I know that repentance will connect me to God. So if I summarize a few things here, uh, in Psalm 32, verse 5, David the prophet says this verse, I acknowledge my sin to you, and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgive the iniquity of my sin. Do you, know, do you see here how many expressions or words related to sin? They are underlined. What are those? Sin, what else? Iniquity, what else? Transgression, anything else? Sorry? Sin and iniquity, again. What, is there any difference between those? Sin, iniquity, transgression. Is there any difference? What's the difference? Remember guys? Sin, iniquity, transgression. Okay. Sin, missing the target, right? To miss a target. I'm scoring in basketball, I miss a target. This is sin. I'm doing archery, I miss a target. This is sin, deviate from the right way, okay? Transgressions, like kind of boundary, law. Like if I have the boundary or what's called the law, the commandment, if I just cross the boundary, that means transgression, right? Sorry? Trespass. Like trespass. How about inequity? Inequity? Bravo. To continue in your state, to stay in your state, and sin or transgression. Like, oh, you realize you cross the boundary. Okay. Can you come back? You realize that you missed the target. Can you try to make it right? But I'm realize I'm I'm continuing to do the same mistake. So that's why he's saying, and I acknowledge my sin. I know that I messed it to you, and my iniquity I have not hidden. This is like continuation of doing the sin. I said I will confess my transgressions. I confess that I I, I already I already. Uh, Cross the boundary to the Lord, and you forgive the iniquity of my sin, the continuation of my sin. And it, it, like, it seems you realize something simple, God will take care of everything else. You realize that you missed something, God will take care of your repetitive uh, uh, sin or, or transgressions or so. Uh, if, I realize, if I just summarize those three things, as steps to repent. Number one, to self. Number two, to God. And number three, to priest. And number four, to people. Okay. Who can tell me to self? What does it mean? Just four steps to realize how can I repent? To self. Like, what, what do I do? Who's myself? So tell me, based on the definition of repentance, what does it mean? My mind, bro, to my mind and my heart, and I'm going to the right direction. 
that will lead to the right to the wrong uh, goal, right? And now I need to to do who did this? Who uh, returned back to himself before he returned back to his father, the prodigal son, right? This is the first step he did before he he returned back. So this is number one to self. Number two to God. What does it mean to God? No, but this is a step, a step within myself. Now I realize that I'm wrong. Now I'm standing up to pray, right? What did uh, in Psalm 50, uh, uh, David the prophet, he said, A. What did he, what did he say in Psalm 50? What do we say in, uh, in uh, Psalm 50 when we pray? Yes. Because of the Bhagavad Yes, against you. I do the sin against who? It's not against my brother. It's not against uh, my colleague. It's against God, right? So that's why when I pray to God, I ask for forgiveness. I ask for forgiveness, and this is a prayer. And to priests, what do I do in a priest? And why? What? Confession, bravo. Why? W would it be enough at this step to God and God knows what's inside? Why the priest? This is a, this is the second thing. What's the main thing? Absolution from the sin, right? The absolution to to uh, the absolution from the sin. This is a forgiveness, and then the guidance for the sin. And to people, what does it mean to people? What do I do with the people after this? Sorry, apologize. Thank you. So if you did something wrong, Halas, you will stop at this point. I I I'm gonna go to the bank. And, and then I will pray God, forgive me, I stole the bank. And I will go confess to Abuna, Abuna, forgive me, I stole a bank. And I stop at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Give me half. <laughs> Return it back. <laughs> exactly. Return back what you have, right? So this is to people, to people who the, those whom you offended, right? Those whom you offended, you go back. So if you summarize those four steps of repentance, one, with yourself, two, with God, three, with Father of Confession, and four, to those whom you offend. When are this retribution important? Sorry? Like this person is retribution uh, Give me an example of any specific order. Like for example, to that person, and then to self, and then to the people, and then to the Okay. Or some of some people that let's see that there's a problem, so you need to see it to the priest first, then to the people, then to the self. Sure. To God. Sure. Yes. Bro, any someone wants to finish the people uh, uh, first and then go for confession to take the absolution, so he doesn't uh, forget about this. Okay. Yes, yes, and the self. This is a, another barrier. Like could be myself could be a barrier for my repentance. Like I feel I didn't do anything wrong. I haven't done anything wrong. Why should I confess? Why should I apologize? Right. And I could be myself could be the barrier for for repentance. Uh, so, uh, so I could uh, okay, I okay. In the Bible, it says like, uh, "Do not steal." I stole, but I'm not going there. But I'm just gonna confess it anyway, mm -hmm. right? And then I go and confess, and then I just realize that you know, I, I felt that this is not right. That would still work. After, like Abuna saying, uh, you already realized within yourself 
and then you will go and confess. No, Does I said the other, like ten minutes change, like the other way around. So I did something, and I know according to the Bible it's wrong. But to myself, like, mm, yeah, I'm not sure. Like I'm not biased, and I'm just gonna confess. Confess. Okay. So, so like basically, like confessing without being really repenting. Repenting. Okay. Yeah. So would that work? No. Right. So the so certain uh, certain steps if we switch them it will not work right so if yes if you still didn't come retain to yourself yet you will go to uh, confess and then you think about yourself later you will maybe you missed it like you missed this uh, this step so some uh, th uh, some steps will not work uh, in that direction and but what if i repent after i confess yes uh, i confess and then i found myself i uh, tell the confession i didn't find like i need to confess like but yeah let me okay. let me take the confession but i will repent after so you, like these are all things like i want to say like uh, some uh, steps will not work if we change them right so if you consider like any uh, any other order may not work or you will not have a true repentance or you will still have uh, some thoughts about the sin, like I will go confess and I, will, and I know after I finish that confession, I will know, I will go back, I have a plan to do the same things again. So I, I, didn't, I didn't recognize, I didn't acknowledge that I did something wrong here, right? So I made that self uh, 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 at, at the end. So I think uh, if, we, if you consider that order, that will be uh, the right thing. But you could mess and be three and four could be four and three like one two four three mess on. if you want to do the things with people first and come for the confession yeah the order could be uh, okay in one two four three but can't be mess on in three uh, three two one four like it can be like this hmm? Three, you will go confess without uh, acknowledging that you did something yeah. wrong. Sometimes I need my father of confession to really give me the assurance that this is right or wrong because some, some, some areas are great. Like I need personal help or like I just said to take the guidance from the father of confession uh, just to, to see if something is wrong with me and that's the four or not. Sometimes I really don't know. Uh, I will tell you something. The Holy I'm Spirit, saying. the Holy Spirit is a guidance in you, right? Like, no, do not relate to a Buna only who will guide you in the in the sacrament, in the sacrament of confession. Yes, the, the Holy Spirit will guide you in the sacrament of confession, but the Holy Spirit is God Himself in you, rebuke and guide, and uh, all of that will uh, with you. So if I am turned off to the Holy Spirit that I in me. I'm going to be turned off also in front of Abu, right? So if I, am, if I have a lot of distractions around me within, uh, it's not going to be Abu who will just remove these distractions. So that's why the self thing is needed. The self thing is, I want to hear to God in me. The Holy Spirit is in me. Sometimes I'm like, so having something in my head, Sometimes it's the opposite thing. Like it even though it's wrong, I'm doing it absolutely right. But if it wasn't for Nanya or wasn't for my mother of confession at this point, I'm not gonna realize that this is right or wrong. Sometimes I'm gonna sit myself and then you guys are saying there's too much distraction. So I need at this point to like so even though if my the Holy Spirit is not working at this point, it's an internal inside of me, too much of an ego inside of me, then I feel at this point the priest is gonna be the doctor that can really point me. What do you think, guys? What do you think? Yes. Uh, yeah, I uh, disagree with Amir Abuna because if, and I do that all the time, what you're saying, but if I don't sit with myself first and sit with God, then going to confession is superficial. I'm going to keep going to Abuna a hundred times with the same sins, nothing changes because 
you didn't really try to fight me to repent, and you did not acknowledge it in front of God and got down on your knees, then Abuna is prepared to give you a solution. So you're saying, oh, I'm not sure. No, you know, we all know. Like, you know, unless it's, you're not talking about sin, unless you, you ask guidance from Abuna for direction about work. Yeah, you go to, but we're talking about confession of sin. Confession of sin, you know, and Abuna said, Abuna said that, it's the uh, the Holy Spirit within us that tells us. You, you feel it from inside. Of you. So you have to stay. Uh, I agree with Abuna 100%. You have to take it in the order because otherwise it's superficial confession. And even if you, you make amends with people around you, you're going you're gonna to sin against them again because nothing really changes. You have to truly acknowledge that you're wrong and try as much as possible. I'm not saying 100% do turn. But try to, to, as much as possible, work on side to you, and then acknowledge it and pray in front of God so God can give you grace through this whole process. But that's just my mind. So I think Truly, that, yeah. Thank you. Yes. It makes sense that sometimes I'm sitting with myself on <laughs> Sometimes I'm sitting and going to the, the monster, for example. <laughs> احنا عاوزين نعمل ريسيت احنا عاوزين نعمل فورمات للهارت للمايند مش عاوزين نعمل عشان تو رياليز الدايركشن رونج ده احنا عاوزين نعمل فورمات could be sitting with Abuna in confession and Abuna would be listening. Many times it's it's obvious like what you're saying is not coming from the heart, Abuna, right? Yes. Like yeah. and, but sometimes Abuna does not say okay. You know, so if Abuna can tell if the person sometimes yeah, if Abuna can tell if the person is genuine or not, let alone the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is is, is much smarter than that. Yeah. Uh, and at that point, I think, yeah, I mean, at that point, whether Abuna, how he looked at me, or what something he said, I realized, well, I was not acknowledging that this this was a sin, and now I'm acknowledging it, or after I, I left Abuna, I, you know what, that was not genuine. I think, and I should go back and confess that there is another sin, like Abuna, I confessed about such and such, but I was not genuine, and that was a sin in itself. Like, wanna, yes, right. I want like wanna, someone. I see, there's two parts. There is something I do want to confess, or I think, uh, or I'm trying to hide, or I'm trying not to admit that this is a sin. So I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not fighting it with myself first before I confess this is something. And I feel there's sometimes I don't know that this is a sin genuinely, even though they sit down on myself, because I keep uh, taking it simply. For example, I'm a simple person, a simple guy, like. I always think simply, so I don't feel this is a problem. According to the law, for example, it is a problem. So if I don't feel that this is a disease, just like the first sin, I need a doctor to point that this is not okay. This is a disease. This is a cancer. This is whatever. Yeah, but like there is one thing to know if it's a sin or not. God said, or Abuna said it's a sin or not. And me, making that decision to repent and change it, what I was saying, like changing my mind first and then doing something about it. Right? So, uh, we, just, we just want to reach in the point, at point in the confession, that I want to stand up to pray the absolution for the person. Uh, uh, to pray the person, not to uh, pray the absolution, for uh, his husband or her wife or or uh, like uh, if if uh, if I realize that this is wrong and I went wrong and stray and this direction was wrong and so I'm ready here to receive the absolution. I'm ready here to 
to confess and start the, the repentance. If I'm not ready, uh, I don't think when you come to the confession, and after Abuna will talk for long discussion, uh, uh, you still have to come to acknowledge, yeah, this is wrong. If we will keep the argue, will not will not help neither Abuna or, or yourself to, to repent. And that's why, like this is, you will see it with the, the prodigal son. You will see it also with Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus also did the same order, right? Uh, you will see it with many other examples in the Bible for uh, for it. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Um, it was a nice discussion. I'm sorry we uh, were late, but uh, thank you so much, Emma. Thank you. Yes, then I put the Thank you.